Prozac is one of the most commonly prescribed antidepressants on the market, and it's on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines for both children and adults. So in this video, we're going to break down the must-know facts about this medication so that you can be better informed when deciding whether or not to start it. And make sure to stick around to the end because I'm also going to fill you in on what I like most and least about Prozac. And shout out to Tasia for this video request. So Prozac was first approved for medical use in the United States in 1987, and over 20 million prescriptions are written for it each year. And so the first thing I need you to know is that this medication has both a generic and a brand version available. So fluoxetine is the generic name, while Prozac is a brand name. Now, you might hear about other brand names for this medication, and there are two in particular I want you to be aware of. The first is Seraphim, and this is a version that's approved for women with premenstrual dysphoric disorder. And the other is Symbiax, and this is a combination of fluoxetine with olanzapine, which is an atypical antipsychotic medication. And this is a heavy hitter combo that's specifically used to treat bipolar depression or treatment resistant depression. Now, what are some of the other uses of Prozac? Well, it's FDA approved in adults for the treatment of MDD, OCD, panic disorder, and interestingly, bulimia. And this is something that's pretty unique because no other antidepressant currently has this indication. In children, Prozac is FDA approved for OCD in those seven and older and depression in those eight and older. So we're getting down to some pretty young ages here. Off-label uses can be variable and include things such as PTSD and social anxiety. So how does this medication work? Prozac is considered to be an SSRI, so a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And it works by increasing the amount of serotonin available in the brain. Some researchers have also found that it might have some norepinephrine and dopamine effects. However, this is thought to be very, very minor as Prozac has been shown to be 200 times more selective in blocking the reuptake of serotonin than of norepinephrine. All right, so let's talk about dosing next. The dose range for Prozac is generally somewhere between 20 to 80 milligrams daily, with 20 milligrams being both a starter and a therapeutic dose. And if I'm using this medication in kids, the elderly, or those who are sensitive to medications, I'll often start at an even lower dose, such as around 5 to 10 milligrams daily. And then when it comes to making dose changes, we'll increase in around 10 to 20 milligram increments, depending on the person. One of the beautiful things about this medication is that in addition to coming in tablets and capsules, it also comes in liquid formulation. So if we need to, we can do smaller dosing increments if there are tolerability issues. And as you probably already know, my approach is to start low and go slow when it comes to dosing any medication in psychiatry. My goal is to always find the lowest effective dose. And remember, when we start this medication or make a dose change, it generally takes six to eight weeks for a full positive benefit to be seen at that given dose. While we're on the topic of different formulations of Prozac, another unique feature is that this medication comes in a once weekly 90 milligram dose. So if you or your child have issues remembering to take your medication on a day-to-day -day basis, this might be something worth talking to your doctor further about. So before we jump into the side effects, make sure to check out the link below if you want to download my antidepressant beginner's guide, where in this, I discuss the pros and cons of the top 10 prescribed antidepressants that are currently on the market. This is your go-to guide if you're looking to start a new antidepressant and aren't sure which one to try. Now, what are Prozac's most common side effects? When looking at the results from the clinical trials, the top side effects reported were nausea, headaches, insomnia, nervousness, anxiety, and somnolence. The big thing to realize is that these side effects are often considered to be both time and dose dependent. Time dependent meaning that they begin immediately upon starting the medication or whenever we make a change to the dose of the medication. And then dose dependent meaning that the likelihood of getting the side effects increases as the dose of the medication increases. So if you're someone who experiences any of these side effects, it's generally expected that they'll go away completely once your body gets adjusted to the medication being in your system. And this takes somewhere around one to two weeks. Now, there are three side effects outside of the top reported ones that I'm constantly being asked about. The first is in regards to sexual dysfunction and the answer is yes. Prozac is associated with sexual side effects, and it's been estimated that around 30 to 60% of people on an SSRI medication will experience some form of sexual dysfunction. The second thing to know about is that Prozac can be activating in some people who take it, especially when first starting it. And this can be a good thing in those who have a depression characterized by extreme fatigue, 
poor concentration, psychomotor slowing, or decreased concentration. Some people with even the very first dose have described an energizing and a fatigue reducing effect. However, these effects can also be problematic, especially in those with a depression that has features of agitation, insomnia, and anxiety. This extra boost could lead to even more jitteriness and potentially even panic. The third side effect that always pops up in conversation is whether or not this medication leads to weight gain. And it's believed that Prozac has less potential for weight gain than all the other SSRIs. And the drug label actually states that significant weight loss may be an undesirable result of treatment with Prozac. More serious but less common side effects could include things such as increased suicidal thoughts or actions in those under the age of 25 years old, serotonin syndrome, increased chances of bleeding, manic episodes, seizures, or low sodium levels in the blood. When someone is put on Prozac, it's ultimately unknown exactly how long they'll need to be on it. Research suggests, though, that once your symptoms return to baseline and you're back to feeling like your normal self again, you should continue the medication at its current dose for another 6 to 12 months prior to coming off, and this will help prevent relapse or recurrence of symptoms. So how do you come off this medication? When stopping Prozac, something that's unique to this medication is its long half-life, and it's the longest of all the SSRI medications. And Prozac itself has a half-life of around two to three days, but then it has an active metabolite called norfluoxetine, and this half-life is even longer, so around two weeks. And what all this means is that it's going to take a very long time for the medication to completely leave your system after you stop taking it. And this will decrease your likelihood of experiencing withdrawal symptoms. What you'll see is that some providers in the community will taper patients off of this medication slowly, while some others will just completely stop it because it self-tapers. Okay, so what are my thoughts about this medication? Well, the things that I like most about it are one, it's the most forgiving if you miss a dose and forget to take it. Odds are the drug levels will remain stable and you won't have withdrawal symptoms. And this is especially appealing in the child and adolescent population where medication compliance is often an issue. Two, it's the least likely of all the SSRIs to cause weight gain, and most people like that about it. And three, it's easy to get people off this medication when it comes to the tolerability of it. The odds of someone having withdrawal reactions are relatively low. What I dislike about this medication is that in some people, it can worsen anxiety before making it better because of those activation properties we talked about earlier. The other thing that's obviously problematic is its high potential to cause sexual side effects, and this can be a major reason why some people stop taking it. Now, if you feel like Prozac is a good option for you, make sure to talk to your physician more about it. Now click that top video if you want to learn more about the sexual side effects of antidepressants.